Okay, good day. So this uh, video is just continuation of our uh, method one. So kindly uh, watch the previous uh, video on the uh, selection or method on the selection of uh, sections for compression uh, members. So we are now to proceed uh, to method two. For our method 2, we are using the same example. So still, we are to uh, select the lightest W14 uh, section for the given uh, loadings. And we have now our load uh, combination. So the length of the column is uh, still uh, 4.5 meters. And uh, the effective length factor is 0 0.8 uh, meter. So we have hinge and uh, fixed uh, support. So if you are to recall, so what is uh, method 1? Okay, for method 1, so first we are to assume a value of the slenderness ratio, then okay, to compute for the uh, required area. That will be our basis in uh, selecting the uh, section. Well, for okay, method 2, okay, for method 2, we are to uh, the same. We are to assume the value of the slenderness ratio, then I okay, compute. So we are to compute for the uh, required radius of gyration. So that is the difference okay, between the two uh, methods. So we are now to proceed to our uh, method number two. So uh, first step, we are to assume our slenderness uh, ratio. That is the KL over R. So we are assuming a value of uh, 50. Again, for the convenient range, that is for 40, uh, from 40 to uh, 60. Since we have now uh, the length and uh, the effective length factor, 4.5 meters and 0.8, uh, that's not meter, uh, basically 0.8. Okay, effective length factor is uh, 0 0.8. We can compute for the required radius of gyration. So let us compute for the radius of gyration. This is 0 0.8. Okay, the length of the column is equal to 4,500 uh, millimeters. Okay, divided by R is equal to uh, 50 or uh, the value of R is equal to 0 0.8 multiplied by 4,500 uh, to be divided by uh, 50. Okay, so computing for the radius of gyration, this is 0.8 of uh, 4,500 uh, divided by uh, 50. And we have that as I-70, I-72 millimeters. So the required uh, radius of gyration based on the assume, assumed slenderness ratio, R is equal to 72 uh, millimeters. So we go now to our uh, database. Then we are to look for a section with a radius of gyration equal to 72 millimeters or higher. So pref uh, our preferred uh, section okay, when designing compression members is that Okay, the width of the flange should be equal to, or let's say, approximately equal to the dimension of the depth of the section. Okay, so for our database, so we are uh, looking for a W14 section. So control F. So W14. Okay, so here are the uh, W14 uh, sections. Then we are looking for okay, the radius of gyration. Okay, so we can try a W14 by a 90. So it's a radius of gyration. Or let's have its area first. Area is equal to 26.5 mil, uh, square mil, square inches. So let's have uh, its area is equal to 26.5 square inches. Then uh, we are to multiply this one to uh, by uh, 25.4 squared to be in square uh, millimeters. So this is uh, 26.5 multiplied by uh, 25.4 squared. So this is 17,096.74. So 17,096. 74 square millimeters. 
then it's a radius of gyration obviously again so when it comes to this uh, sections wide flange or wide flanges we have i sub y is less than the i sub uh, x so our critical radius of gyration is i uh, the radius of gyration with respect to the minor axis ry so what is uh, the value of its uh, radius of gyration So already in uh, millimeters, I think. Right, is equal to uh, 94 uh, millimeters. So what about the inches? So I'm looking for the inches dimension, but this is uh, in uh, in millimeters already. But these dimensions or the areas are in. Okay, so we have for RY, that is 3.7. So we have the, uh, I think, the metric equivalent. So let us just uh, double check. So the RY is equal to uh, 3.7 uh, inch or inches. So if you are to multiply this one to 25.4, that is now equal to. Uh, this is uh, 3.7 multiplied by uh, 25.4. Uh, it's 93.98. So this is uh, the same as 94. So we have that in our table already. Uh, the equivalent uh, RY in uh, millimeters. Okay. So we proceed to our uh, computation. So we have now the uh, the value of Ry is equal to uh, 93.98 millimeters, which is greater than 72 mm. So if we are to consider the, the smaller section, uh, let's say uh, W90, uh, W14 by 90. So we have the smaller section, uh, let's say w, uh, W14 by 82. For W14 by 82, it's a 2.48. If you are to check, what is 2.48 by 25.4? It's 62.99. That is less than 72. So we cannot, uh, I think we cannot use a W14 by 82 as our uh, initial uh, section. So we have 93.98 is greater than uh, 72. Then when you, if you are designing again uh, wide flanges for compression members, so what is the value of the B sub F for this uh, section? The W14 by uh, W14 by 90. Okay, so for the W14 by 90, uh, the depth is equal to 14 inches. Okay, the depth is equal to 14 inches and it's a uh, B sub F is equal to 14.5. Uh, 14 so the depth, uh, four, this is 14.5 uh, and the depth is equal to uh, 14 inches. So they are approximately equal, or they, we have uh, close, uh, close dimensions. So we have now okay, the value of Ry. Let us compute for the actual uh, effect, uh, slenderness uh, ratio, the KL over uh, R. And this is equal to, we have 0 0.8, the length of the column is equal to 4,500. Then to be divided by the actual uh, radius of uh, gyration, the 93.98 and this is now equal to we have a 0.8 multiplied by 4500 then to be divided by a 93.98 that is a 38.306 this is 38.306 
Then, okay, if you are to compute for okay, the f sub a, or f sub a is equal to uh, pi squared, okay, the modulus of elasticity, divided by the slenderness uh, ratio, this is raised to uh, 2. So, this is now equal to pi 200,000 megapascals for steel, or pi squared. Then, divided by, we have 38.306 uh, uh, squared. We have now f sub e is equal to, okay, so shift uh, pi squared, then multiplied by 200,000. Then, okay, to be divided by uh, the 38.306 uh, uh, squared. So, it's uh, 1,345.229. Okay, 1,345.229 megapascals. So, uh, let us compute for the F sub CR. But uh, before that, okay, let us uh, check if the value of the KL over R is uh, less than 4.71 of the square root of... Okay, 4.71 of the square root of E divided by uh, FY. So, this is okay, 38 point. Uh, 306 is it less than i okay, 4.71 of the square root of e that is 200,000 megapascals so again for this uh, example okay, we are using fy is equal to 345 so this is uh, 38.306 is it less than Okay, the 4.71 multiplied by the square root of 200,000 megapascals, so divided by uh, 345. Okay, so that is the same as 113.403. Uh, Since this is uh, satisfied, so how to compute for the F sub CR okay, based on that condition, that is equal to okay, the quantity of 0 0.658 I okay, raised to Fy divided by F sub E. Then to be multiplied by okay, the f sub y. So we are now to uh, substitute. This is 0 0.658 uh, I raised to f sub y, 345 megapascals, divided by the computed f sub e. So what is our f sub e a while ago? 1345.229. So 135.229. Then to be multiplied by 345 mega pascals. So our F sub CR is now equal to. Okay, we have that as a 0.658 I raised to 345. Then uh, divided by 1345.229. Uh, okay, then to be multiplied by 345 mega pascals. That's 309.885. So, 309.885 uh, megapascals. So, how do we compute for uh, the value of the ultimate load or the P sub U? Okay, for the P sub U, this is equal to okay, the P, the reduction factor, multiplied by the P sub N, or our reduction factor multiplied by the F sub CR, okay, multiplied by the area of the uh, section. So, we have... Okay, again, so for the uh, computation of the P sub U is equal to IP F sub CR multiplied by the area of the section. So we have the ultimate load is now equal to P, reduction factor for LRFD is 0 0.90, then multiplied by F sub CR. Okay, the computed value of the F sub CR is equal to 309.885. So this is a uh, 309.885 megapascals or the newtons per square millimeters. Then multiplied by the area of this as uh, trial section. Uh, the trial section is equal to 17,096.94 square mm. So we have that as a uh, 17,096.74 square millimeters. So, obviously, if you are to uh, do unit analysis, uh, the remaining unit will be in terms of newtons to be divided by 1,000 uh, newtons or is to 1 kilo 
newton or one yes one kilonewton so we have now the value of the uh, p sub u okay, the capacity of our trial section okay, that will be uh, 0.9 of 309.885 uh, eight, then to be multiplied by okay, so I forgot the area so my apologies uh, yes we have this area so we have 300 uh, that is 17,096 0.74 then to be divided by uh, 1000 to be in kilonewtons that is a uh, 4768.221 4768.221 kilo and newtons so if you are to recall what is our actual p sub u okay, that is our p sub u a while ago Okay, that is I 2320 uh, kilonewtons so okay this is a uh, 2320 uh, kilonewtons so the capacity of the trial section is okay, we can consider class that the w14 by 90 is adequate As you can see, W14 by 90 is adequate, 4768.221. But okay, I can, uh, we can also conclude that this uh, capacity, uh, this section is over-designed. So why over-designed? For a reason, okay, twice of 2320, what will be that value? Twice of uh, 2320, 4640. So... Twice of the actual load or actual ultimate load is less than the capacity of this uh, section. So we can tell that this is okay, an over-designed section. So okay, uh, we can, uh, maybe, so will you try uh, on your own? So try a smaller section. Okay, so try a smaller uh, section. So since our uh, our analysis, uh, we started with uh, the required radius of gyration, and the ideal design for wide flange for compression member is that uh, the width of the flange should be approximately equal to the depth of the flange. So I think this is one uh, disadvantage of method two. It will give you an over design uh, section. So, try a smaller section. So, if you are to try a smaller section, then okay, from our previous uh, procedure, so we uh, we are able to check the adequacy of the W14 by uh, 61 as an adequate uh, section. So, that is our uh, method 2. Okay? So, our second, okay, second example or second procedure, how to select a section for a compression member. So try a smaller section, but the problem is that uh, maybe you cannot satisfy the required uh, radius of gyration. Since okay, the radius of gyration required from the assumed uh, slenderness ratio is 50 and the required radius of gyration is uh, 72. If we are to use a smaller section, okay, the result will be smaller radius of gyration. So just compare the two methods. So kindly, again, uh, reminder, kindly watch again the first uh, video, the method one, on how to select, okay, on how to select a section for compression members.